Today, ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen actually, <laughs> it is time to do some Lego photography. I'm gonna go through my process for photographing Lego figures and you're gonna follow along. This whole thing started the other day when the, my mother brought a big bag of Legos that I used as a child and I started discovering lots of childhood memories that I didn't even remember that I had when I was building these Lego bricks with my son. So I got the idea to maybe make some portraits of some of my favorite Lego figures from uh, the early 90s, late 80s, somewhere around there. So in this video I'm gonna show you uh, my process from coming up with the idea to improving on the photo until it is good. First I started with a naive approach, I used a regular macro lens on my Sony a7 III and a tripod and a light. And then I took a photo and then improved on this in several steps. I happen to have a video light, a Godox SL60, uh, which is very convenient and then I put that on my uh, C-stand. Uh, which is also a great thing to have, uh, it's so easy to adjust the light's position and it doesn't take up that much space. You can use any macro lens for this, you don't need that high magnification. You can even use extension tubes, so you will get just as good image quality with that. And of course you can use any camera. I have a desk that you can uh, heighten like this and that is uh, a great tool to have as well to easily adjust the position of the Lego figure without adjusting the tripod too much. So I began with just this naive simple approach to just put the Lego man in front of the camera and have a light and see what kind of results I would get. And this already looks pretty good, right? But the first thing I noticed that kind of irritated me a bit is the glares uh, on the arms here. I need a diffuser to get some beautiful soft light on this Lego man. So I just used my own lens diffuser and then I um, did like a makeshift mount here with my umbrella. Tried to hang it like this, didn't really work so I took some tape to fasten it. And then I have some diffusion. Uh, the core idea of diffusion is basically to make the light source big and even. And it only needs to be big compared to the subject. And since the subject is so small here, you don't need a huge diffuser. This one works great. The light source is huge uh, in the Lego man's perspective. And uh, here you can see the light without and with diffusion. And you can see that the glares uh, soften a lot and the light gets more even and beautiful. And this is the result. Uh, not a huge difference, but definitely a difference that I want to have. This is before, this is after. It is a difference, right? You can see it at, at least if you look closely. But when I study this picture, I notice something else. This. There is a lot of dust and small hairs and stuff on my Lego man. Uh, so I need to brush that off. And uh, this brush is uh, the kind that you can find in camera stores. And for a macro photographer this is a must have. When you're photographing objects at home they will be dusty no matter how clean your home is. So it's important to brush them off to at least get the worst uh, off of them. So let's try again and see uh, if the <laughs> dust came off or not. Yeah, looks a lot better. So let's move on with the next thing I kind of don't like. And that is the background. It just looks uh, amateurish. And I want something uh, bright, like this uh, normal paper here that I took from the printer. Uh, it's nice to have uh, a white or like light gray background for this colorful Lego man because then the colors will stand out more and you will get a more minimalistic look to the photo. It will look a lot more clean and professional. So I simply taped the edges of the papers to the table here and then kind of uh, bent them upwards uh, at the end because I've seen this in like fashion shoots and it seemed like a good way to get a nice smooth white background. And please note here that uh, this is like four or five papers uh, stacked together and the reason for that is that one paper is too thin so you would see through it and I don't want that. Wow, this looks good. Big difference, I'm starting to like this. 
But there is one problem still. And if you look here, you can see that it is very blurry here on the map. And this is of course due to short depth of field that you always get in macro photography. Even though I've used a very small aperture here like f11 or f16. And to alleviate this, we need to do focus stacking. I have a very fancy rig here, which is the stack shot. It's an expensive one, but I bought it because I am very lazy and uh, the stack shot will do all the increments in the focus stack automatically for you. But of course you will get just as good results with a manual uh, focus stacking rail. It's up to you how much you want to spend. Remember to never ever mix different colors of light. Turn off the normal uh, light bulbs and lights uh, in your room and only use your uh, flash or your video light so that you get just one color temperature. Then I am decreasing the strength of my video light and I'm changing the aperture to f5.6 uh, to get maximum sharpness because now I don't need to worry about depth of field. Besides the power cable, the Stackshot has a cable to trigger your camera as seen here and also one cable to move the rig forward. Uh, basically when you focus stack you move the whole camera to change focus in small small steps and do check your magnification on your camera here it is around 0.7 times and then you look in this chart here that I've linked in the description uh, where you can see how big a step you should use. And now I'm using one time magnification just to be on the safe side and then the step should be 0.28 millimeters which is 280 micrometers. And then the next step is to focus your uh, lens on the uh, part of the picture that is uh, the closest to you and that is this corner of the map here. So I'm setting the focus, uh, I could have just moved the rail instead of using the focus ring on my lens that is um, a matter of taste and then the next step is to set the end position or decide on the end position for the stack and then you should find a part of your subject that is further away um, and then after that uh, I'm starting the stacking procedure and since I have a stack shot it will do everything automatically for me which is very convenient but if you don't have a stack shot you would have to manually move the camera uh, 0.28 millimeters between each photo that you take. So when focus stacking you take many shots at different focusing distances and then you will combine them together in a software in the end. And my software of choice is Helicon Focus. I find it easy to use and delivering good results. And uh, for this kind of stack I usually use method C pyramid with one in smoothing and that gives me great results. Here you can see all the frames that I took and the final result. And it looks awesome, right? It is very sharp from front to back. There is no problem with short depth of field. I do see that I forgot to clean in some places with the brush. <laughs> but other than that, I am very, very happy with this portrait of this Lego man. And now he can continue to live on forever. Or at least as long as YouTube and Instagram exist. <laughs> And here is a comparison between the first shot and the final shot and I do have to say that it's quite an improvement. A good tip to use to uh, get some uh, lighter shadows is to have a white object to the left that can reflect some light. Then you can adjust just how dark you want the shadows to be to get the optimum uh, lighting on your character. The formula I have used in this video you can of course apply to many other things, not only Lego figures. It's a good way to uh, take nice uh, pictures of uh, small objects uh, with a light and neutral looking uh, background. To make the picture a little bit more interesting you can also of course arrange uh, to have some stuff in the background uh, as I tried here with this uh, airport firefighter and that's it that's it for this video thank you so much for watching please subscribe for more weekly macro photography videos bye bye